our beautiful sunset has dried. I do see like a hint of light coming through the sky there. And what I want you to start thinking about before we actually even put the um, evergreen trees in here is what do I see in here? Before we do our next exercise, please put this up somewhere and keep turning it. Look in the mirror and see what you see. And you'd be amazed at the different um, ideas that might come to you. Most people, if you're like me, <laughs> and you go to art class and you're asked to do an evergreen tree, we do something like this, right? Maybe you recognize this. In reality, if you go and look at an evergreen tree out your window, hopefully there's one nearby, you will notice that the trees, the branches on top, and many of the branches reach for the sky. So I like to start with an upside down arrow. A teacher of mine, Doris Rice, taught me this, and it's been very helpful my whole life. Then you don't have to draw the trunk. If it's easier for you to draw a hint of a trunk, draw a dotted line. And then try to make your branches, even these branches here, will, and they don't have to line up exactly. It's almost more natural if you don't. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to go on this first tree. I know the lines are a little light, but once I like them, and this is all going to be done with your watercolor brush when we actually do this. So there's your basic skeleton. Then I like to turn it sideways because my hand does a better job pulling the branches. And then I begin with little lines. I'm not going to do every needle. And I do a lot of dotting with my watercolor, which we know once the watercolor wet dots touch each other, they kind of blend and become a mass. So again, that's maybe a little, even too many little branches there. But just much harder to do in pencil than it is with your watercolor. So if you are good at this, <laughs> you're going to be fine. So there's half my tree. Notice the nice space between them. That was one of the hardest things for me to do, to leave space. And in a case of a beautiful sunset, you want to have spaces in between your branches so that you can see that glorious color, okay? So I think for the sake of this lesson, we're going to stay really simple and just do a couple evergreens. Okay, so basically little lines, little lines and dots, little lines and dots. That's how I do my trees. Then you look at it head up and you say, yeah, that could work. You know, maybe there are a couple it needs to fill in a little bit in between because the body, of course, the, the area around the trunk is pretty full with branches and greens. If you want to stick an extra one in for some more volume, that's fun. And just do this while you're watching commercials at night. They're a waste of time anyway, so practice some evergreen trees, okay? Now, what if there was a little baby behind there? The baby would most likely be behind the mom tree so the body of it would stop there. If you put it way down here, you're actually bringing the tree in front of the mother tree, which is totally fine. Just know that prospectively where to stop it. So I'm gonna put my little skeleton. I always start with the upside down arrow, and then I'm gonna just give my little skeleton there. I want her to, him or her to stop there, okay? So then, exactly the same thing, but on a much smaller scale, this is a little baby. There we go. And then we turn it around. I'm gonna do one in watercolor for you real quick so you'll see how much easier it is in watercolor. But if you can do it in pencil and pen, and there is the little baby tree, okay? And so you don't paint or draw as much there because you don't want to interfere with the branches there, but you certainly weave them through. All right, let's try one in watercolor. Take a number two. All right, let's make sure you can see the colors. We're going to be at sunset, so we're going to, the trees are going to be far away most likely. And at nighttime or sunset, they tend to be almost black. But I don't like to use black in watercolor. Green. I'm going to add some ultramarine blue to it. 
Well, it's already very dark, but that's okay. And I'm going to add some gray to it. If you wanted to add some maroon to it, you certainly could. All that helps to make a dark color without it becoming a black. Okay. Now there's my, obviously my brush is wet. I have a nice texture on here. I'm just going to move that a little bit because I'm left handed. And I'm going to start one right here for you. I'm going to start with our upside down arrow and give the skeleton. Boom, my tree is done. <laughs> and I'm going to reload so I don't run out. And if you do, it's easy to reload. I tend to hold my brush really close to the end when I'm doing detail work. Don't know why. I think I just have better control. There are my dots. And my little V's or my little lines. Again, you can't always tell how it looks until you turn it around. For instance, this really looks like there's more of a glow. So if I were to put my trees in here, maybe, this side of my trees, the left side of my trees, would have a little bit more light in them. So that's also good to know um, that if that were the case, okay, there's just kind of a little runaway in there. That's okay. I could add some more in here and balance it. But if that were the case, that I could see the sunlight on that, I might even take some of my um, Let's do one of a varying height. We did a shorter one there. Um, if you have your trees together, you want to make sure you don't have marching soldiers and that they're all the same height and the same um, distance of where they go in the bottom. If that's what you want to do, of course you can do it. Just be aware that it's very easy to pattern these babies. Um, I like it when a few are together and then there's a gap between them. I always think that's effective. So like for instance with this one, if these were together, I put one. I'm doing this really fast, okay, for the sake of the class, the demo. I might put one there. So it's not, it's none of those heights there. It's by, the, by themselves and it's also, this is real quick, okay, so kind of ignore this, but I just want you to give you the idea. Okay, so there you have already a nice formation. If it doesn't feel like it's attached, you definitely want to come back into it and attach it. And usually I attach them just with little dots like this, because it, otherwise it looks like the top of your tree is floating off. Okay, so I would like you very much to practice a few of these on your own. And when we come back, we're going to figure out where to put them in our scene.